Do flash meters go up when the light goes down? I'm gonna try to clear up some confusion on today's episode of... Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. Don't forget to go to askdavidbergman.com. There's a form on that site. You can submit your own photo questions and I just might pick it to answer right here on a future show. Also, you're already watching on the Adorama YouTube channel. Hopefully you're already a subscriber. If not, go ahead and click that button down below. Use the little bell icon so you get notifications as soon as new photo shows are released just for you all week long right here on Adorama TV. Today, I've got a question that was sent in by Morty R. Honestly, you can go ahead and freeze frame that question if you want. It's kind of a long convoluted question and I'm not going to read the whole thing. But basically from what I can tell, he seems to be a bit confused because his flash meter is saying that wider apertures like 2.8 are giving him less light than smaller apertures like f16. Now it's true that using wider apertures like 2.8 on your camera is going to let more light in through the lens and give you a brighter image as opposed to closing down the aperture to something like f16. The numbers from a flash meter might seem backwards from that at first glance until you understand exactly how it works. Now what is a flash meter? Well, you can use an external flash meter like this one when shooting with your flash on manual so that you can see how much light it's putting out and then what you want to do is make adjustments to your camera's exposure. Now, honestly, in the age of digital photography, where you can shoot your image and look at it right away, meters are used less and less, but I still think it can be a useful tool since the camera screen isn't always that accurate. For the most control possible, it's still nice to take readings and actually interpret the light yourself to get it looking exactly how you want. Now, the way meters work is all of them use an 18% gray as reference. Now, that can also be called middle gray, and light meters use that to determine if what it's seeing is brighter or darker than that middle range of brightness. Having said that, there are generally two kinds of meters. First is reflective, and second is incident. Reflective meters read the light after it's been reflected off of your subject. That's how the meter in your camera, for example, works. Since it sees the light in real time, it really can't read the light reflecting back when you take a flash photo. That burst of light is really just too short. So you can use an external flash meter to go ahead and read that flash. A lot of modern flash meters do have the option of reading reflected light. So it works just like your camera meter, but adding in the ability to get a reading from your flash exposure. Now, the other kind of meter is an incident meter, and I think it's really even more helpful than a reflective one. An incident meter reads the light that's hitting the meter before it's reflected back. So it's more of an accurate reading of the light itself. Let's say I'm using a speed light or a flash of any kind in manual at a set power. It doesn't matter. Let's say half power. The reading from an incident meter will always be exactly the same as long as you're at the same distance from that flash, no matter what I'm photographing. So it's going to tell me how much light is coming out of the flash, period. A reflective meter, on the other hand, will be influenced by the reflectivity of the subject. More light reflects back off of lighter colors. So someone wearing a white wedding dress, for example, is going to give a much different reflected light reading than someone wearing dark clothes. Now, both meters definitely have their place in photography, but I think an incident meter is way more helpful for flash photography so you can read exactly how much light is coming out of the flash. Then what you do is you can change either the flash power or your camera settings to get the exposure you want for your photo. Now keep in mind, we are only talking about when you're shooting your flash on complete manual, on full manual. If you're using an auto mode like TTL, the camera's gonna change the flash exposure automatically on each frame, so your readings really won't matter in that case. Now I'm gonna show you how to use an incident meter and you might see how some people like Morty do get confused with the numbers. Now here's my setup in my studio. Um, I've got an X taped to my backdrop just to make sure that I'm reading the light at the same spot every time. I'm using a Canon 600 EXRT speed light on a stand pointed at that X. I've got the Canon 1DX Mark III with a 24 to 70 2.8 lens and it's sitting on my brand new Manfrotto tripod and ball head. Uh, maybe I'll do a video about tripods if someone goes asks the question because I just went through the process of picking out two new ones. So I've got a lot of tripod information in my head, but um, I'm also using the STE3RT, which is the Canon wireless trigger for flash. 
um, to go ahead and trigger that. And I'm taking the picture using a Canon cable release just so I don't have to touch the cameras. <laughs> It'll save me a little, uh, a little work there. So um, of course, I'm going to put gear links down below in the description if you want to see all that stuff. Now, my settings, I'm at 200 ISO and 250 of a second shutter speed on the camera. Now, that's the max sync speed on this camera. Shutter speed does not affect the flash exposure as long as you're at or below your camera's maximum flash sync speed. I'm only going to change my aperture to brighten or darken my flash exposure. Now, I am using my very old Siconic flash meter. This thing's probably 20 years old. It does not have all the bells and whistles of the current models, but it still works absolutely fine for basic flash exposures. Um, I want to read the light with the meter so I know what aperture to plug into my camera so I get the right amount of light on my X. Now, I'm just going to start with a random flash setting uh, just because, right, just to start somewhere. I'm going to start at 1 8th power. I'm going to set it on this uh, remote transmitter. Let's go ahead and I'm already at eighth power here. So I'm kind of starting there just so I have room to move really in either direction if I need to. Um, I first need to dial my settings into the meter. And what you do on the meter, on every meter pretty much works the same way, is you wanna set two of the three pieces of the exposure triangle, the two that you know. So in this case, I'm at 200 ISO at 250th of a second, and it's gonna give me the third piece, the aperture. I'm also gonna make sure I'm on flash mode, and then all I have to do is click the button, and then when it sees the flash go off, it's gonna take the reading. Now, if I was using a reflective meter, I would point it at the X, but since I'm taking an incident reader, I'm gonna put the meter flat against the backdrop and point the white dome, which is where the reading is taken from, towards the light. Now, when I go ahead and trigger the flash, like so, it's gonna give me a reading of four and three tenths, right? So that's what the aperture, what it says for the aperture. That's four and a third, that's a third of the way between f4 and 5.6. So now all I have to do is go to my camera, whoops, if I don't fall over on everything, and go ahead and set that at 4.5, which is four and a third, which I'm already at there. Let's go ahead and put this on so that I can take the picture. Make sure I'm in focus. Autofocus is a wonderful thing in this case. And if I go ahead and take the picture, my exposure is right where it should be. Now remember, my flash is still at eighth power. If you're using big studio strobes, it might have a different numbering system to set the power, but it really doesn't matter. Point is, that's a proper exposure. But I actually knew that was gonna be a proper exposure before I took the photo because the meter told me to set my camera at f four and a third, right? If I was photographing something dark, it would be dark. If I was photographing something light, it would be light. Now, creatively, I might, wa I might wanna make some decisions to lighten or darken my subject, but that's up to me. I can do that easily if I want to. All I have to do is simply change my aperture. So if I go, for example, to 2.8 on my aperture, without changing my flash power, I have now overexposed my image. I've made it brighter one and a third stop. Makes perfect sense, right? This is now where I think Morty got confused. Let's say now I dial up my flash power two stops from eighth power to half power. Let's go ahead and take this off of here so I can work on it. I'm gonna go from eighth power to up two stops to half power. Now every time, remember, every time you double your flash power, you're gonna get one extra stop of light. So that's two stops brighter, eighth, quarter, half, right? If I take the transmitter, and go back and now take a new reading. Again, I'm still at 200 at, two, at uh, 250. And now it says I am at eight and a third, right? That makes perfect sense. It's putting out exactly two more stops of light. So I'm eight and a third is two stops brighter. Now, the higher number, it's actually a darker photo, right? Why is that? This is where Morty's confused. It's because the meter is telling me actually what to set my camera at. Right, that's what the meter is telling me because there's more light hitting my subject now. I need to close down my aperture to get the proper exposure. Otherwise, my image is gonna be too bright. Let's go ahead and put the transmitter back on. And if I stay at 4.5, you can see that, uh, let's see, let's go back to 4.5 because I'm at 2.8. If I go to 4.5, you can see I'm overexposed, right? But then if I go up two stops to F9, and go ahead and take a picture. That now is the proper exposure because I've matched what it told me on the meter. I'm now half power on my strobe 
and F9, and I've got the perfect exposure. So that really should clear up the confusion, Morty. If your flash meter is giving you a reading of a small aperture, like F16 or F22, it's because there is a lot of light coming from the flash, and you need to close down your aperture to one of those higher numbers to go ahead and cut some of that light from coming into the sensor and overexposing your image, right? That should make perfect sense. Conversely, if the flash meter is giving you a wider aperture, like 2.8 or 4, it's because there's less light coming from the flash, and you need to go ahead and open up your aperture to let more of that light in. I hope that helps. I appreciate all of you hanging in here with me. I hope that makes sense. If you are confused about something, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and send me your question by going to askdavidbergman.com, and I will try my best to answer it on a future show. Please go ahead and like this video, if you like this video, of course. And don't forget to subscribe and comment below. Thanks so much again for joining me. I am back here on Adorama TV every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern with a brand new episode. Come on back right here next week on Ask David Bergman, and I'll see you then.